Timothy Garcia get it, and I'll also be talking about Montejano's Kill of the Soldiers. Um, this. Um, I had the opportunity to expand my, or Ernesto, my chart cultura, and um, our conocimiento of that by interviewing my tío Mero Garcia. Um, he was born in 1947 in West Laco, Texas, the poorest county in the nation, and he grew up in those days, in the 40s, 50s, and uh, became a young man in the 1960s era, and um, the, which was the Chicano movement era. As a young boy, um, he worked migrant fields of East and West Texas, um, as far up north as Michigan, Minnesota, and as he grew older, he became involved in the movement um, by working with Vista volunteers, which were volunteers in service to America. I'm not sure maybe some of you are familiar with that. And basically, because of his political activism and his organizing, um, that was the reason why I chose to interview him for our OSB project. Mm -hmm. And currently, he lives in Laredo, and he does have a secondary residence in Figueroa. Ironically, the same fields that he used to work and cultivate um, as a young boy um, under the age of 10, which is, you know, uh, for a lot of us going to college, we, we, we can't experience that and we, don't, we can't share in that. So it was very, um, it was very emotional and uh, I enjoyed it very much. Some of the, some of the significant things um, that he said about the movement um, that struck, you know, a chord in my mind were the fact that the socioeconomic, the discrimination issues, issues, the conditions of inequity and inequality that really helped shape um, how he became a young man, later an older man, um, as he matured. Um, some things he told me about his experience on the field really blew my mind. Um, he came from a family of 11, actually 12 brothers and sisters, one died at birth. And one tenant that they worked for, and he was only, I, I guess he told me like eight, um, he told me that they offered, and this was a white family that um, on the farm or the, the field that they work on. He, had, he told me that they offered to trade a pig for his younger brother, Betito, and um, I don't know. I don't know how that makes you all feel, but that made me, you know, it, it touched me very much. Um, he did mention to me that body of organizing first led by the NYC, the National Youth Council, um, and later he organized and worked with the Vista volunteers. What it did for him, as uh, Montejano touches on in his book about body organizing, is it led him from hanging out with his friends and the Vatos, as uh, Montejano typifies, and um, from working these random jobs that didn't pay anything. Um, he worked at gas stations, he worked at you know all types of vocational jobs growing up, in addition to being a field worker, a migrant worker. Um, and it led him to become more politically active and you know into this organizing world. Um, the most astonishing part is he only had a fifth grade education, and um, you know we, we, we learned with Chicanos um, the classroom setting that the conditions weren't equal. He told me that they would just you know set them aside, um, not even teach them. So you know, given that fact that he had very little education, he politically you know he, he ascended to the political ranks in Laredo as a young man. Um, this is very motivating for me. Um, working with Vista, he, he attested how they mobilized, they educated, and they organized their bodies. You know, they didn't depend on somebody else from the outside to come and you know tell them what to do. They themselves, we um, more so, um, organized those neighborhoods. Um, and what they were doing in Laredo, I don't know how many of you are from Laredo or even know the situation politically in Laredo, but um, over our history, maybe until the late 70s, or early 70s, we had what was called a, a patron system, patronismo. Um, and Laredo was under the rule of the Martins. Um, and what Vista did, and the, little, and the local organizations there that were working with Vista, actually they were, um, as he de depicted it, he was, they were really Las Unida, but they were working under the visage of Vista. And they mobilized to end the patron system in Laredo. And, um, they did in the Patron system. Pe mayor Pepe Martin back in the 70s, he was, his rule ended and they elected a mayor, Alberto Tangelo. I think he was a Republican and ironically, they voted, you know, they, those people voted him out of office. Um, 
The last most impressionable thing that he told me before I closed the movie is that if he would have had it his way, if he would have been able to you know, have better educational conditions or not having to be a migrant farm worker or what have you, um, he would have loved to finish school um, and become a lawyer. And ironically, um, and ironically, I say ironically because I'm hoping to become a lawyer um, or go to graduate school, but the thing that he wanted as a child and couldn't you know, aspire to or to get realistically, um, I'm doing the same thing and following a lot of his footsteps. So um, in a sense, he's living vicariously through me, and I, I hope that I could help him realize his dreams that way. And finally, in closing, um, my reflection of my field, um, as I said, he was an everyman, um, having a little formal education, uh, growing up in the Vigo schools of East and West Texas. Um, despite all this lack of education and through his lived experiences, his organizing, his mobilizing, he understood the implications of the Chicano Chicana movement, and um, he understood that the root of all these problems that we still experience today, um, disparate educational circumstances, racial discrimination, civil and political inequality, um, he, he didn't know how to articulate it in such a manner, but he knew what he was talking about, and he knew that he was fighting for the people. And the reason he became an activist and he worked with Vista was so he could help people. He never, he's never asked for help from, everybody, from anybody, but he always offers help to you know, whoever. Um, for example, many of his um, employees over the years have been immigrants that weren't, or uh, you know, as the state called them illegal immigrants, but as I call them, they're human, and he saw that as well and he helped them employ them in such a manner. Um, and that's what I learned from him, because I worked with him during the summers, um, and the, con the, net the business, business network that he built, or that he served in his community, Laredo now, um, mainly labor work, manual vocation. Um, he built his network through Vista, you know, ascending to the ranks of organizing, mobilizing, and whatnot. And uh, working with him, I learned his hard work ethic and um, this this level or this notion of humility, and um, uh, pretty much, you know, he got all this from the movement, so that's why I'm going to read my deal. Thank you very much.